Hi, this presentation is going to walk through integrating views into your web forms. My name is Jacob Rockowitz. I'm known as Jay Rockowitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the web form module for Drupal 8. How do you integrate web form submission views? Web form submission views can replace or be added to a web form's results table, aka an entity list for developers out there. So this is the UI for managing submission views. You pick the view that you want. You can enter the name in the UR for the URL and the title. If there's multiple views, you're going to need titles displayed in the drop-down menu. And then there's three contexts. There's a global context, a web form context, and node. These are all the places where submissions are displayed. The global is there's a list of all the submissions coming in. Actually, I'm going to move ahead because this slide shows you that. In the global context, there's this UR path that shows you every submission. Users can see every submission they have on your site. It's kind of for GDPR compliance. And then when you get to a web form, you can view all the submissions for that web form. And users can view all the drafts and submissions for that web form. And then web form nodes show you all the submissions for that web form node. And users can view the drafts and submissions for that web form node. I'm going to demo it because it really helps you start to understand the context. So we're going to only focus on the global context for this demo. This is the def default list of all submissions coming into the site. Only administrators can view it, but you can configure it. I'm going to open the configuration in a new tab because it just helps to go back and forth. And I'm going to go over to the submissions form. I'm going to scroll down, and this is the UI. I'm going to select administer. I'm going to title, give it a name, admin. And I'm going to use this default name. I'm going to check this box. These are the contexts. By the way, the help shows you the paths that will be replaced if you check off submissions. So let's just show you how this works. Hit save. Now if I hit refresh, you now see that the administer view with bulk operations has replaced the default view and you have the ability to delete multiple submissions at once. To go further, I just want to show you how the replace works. So by default, views replace the results table. But if you uncheck these options, you can say, OK, don't replace it. And now if we go back and hit refresh, you're going to get this drop down menu that shows you two views two ways to look at the information. This is default, and then you could jump over to the bulk operations. And you can add as many views as you want to any list of submissions. One little note is access restrictions are checked on the view display, so you can kind of set rules on which views are available to which roles or user permissions. We'll get into that a little bit more, but I'm going to move ahead. So there's a default web form submission view that you need to use, so we're going to talk about that. The default web form submission view provides basic view displays with access controls and contextual filters. So this is the default web form submission views display. And you can see over on the right, there's the contextual filters and there's four displays. And the next slide actually goes into this where it walks you through the displays. There's the default display, which is just the submissions. Administer, which gives you filters and bulk operations with the ability to delete. Manage, similar to the administer without the delete functionality. So you're managing and flagging submissions. And then there's a review, which just includes filter for someone to quickly kind of scan what submissions have come in. And these are just starting points. The contextual filters are really important because this is what controls what's being displayed when a view is placed on the site. And there are five filters. There's the web form, where the web form, what, if you want to view web form submissions, you need to pass in the web form ID. This is all done automatically. You just need these filters on your view, and it'll be taken care of. If you have a web form node, you need to pass the entity type, which is node, and the ID of the, the node. And then if we have user submissions and we're looking at those, we need to know the account ID of the user, and that's what the contextual filter does. And then when we're looking at user submissions, they can see their drafts, and that's what that final flag is, whether they're looking at their drafts or they're not. So these are the default filters. They're right there. Do not edit these. That's the recommendation. We're going to get into some more tips and tricks right here. Pay attention to the access restrictions is really helpful because you can have multiple views associated with one web form. Use this default view as a template, a starting point. You can just copy it. When you get through the UI, there'll be a quick way to just hit create new web form submission view and you'll copy this default template. And yeah, you should create dedicated views for individual forms. I would go through in each web form, if you're going to use views for it, create a dedicated view for it. Never change the contextual filters. Finally, you need to install the Webform Views Integration Module to get the most out of this the feature. So what is the Webform Views Integration Module? Well, the Webform Views Integration Module exposes Webform elements to views. It's all it 
It's a key feature it does. So this is what it does. It's just taking the default contact form and exposing the message, subject, email, and name. Those elements are custom, are not immediately exposed to views, and it makes a big difference. So the web form views integrates module exposes these elements to views, improves web form node integration, that relationship, and it will provide some additional enhancements, and people are still working on this module. And I really want to do a shout out to the maintainer, Alexander, who's maintaining the web form views integration module and also helping me with the web form module, but he's done all the work on that module and getting those elements working. And the big takeaway here is web form views can build any type of report. It's really powerful because now you can get into more than just displaying a list of table. You can do pie charts. You could even do your own teaser display for submissions. You can set up any type of management display you need for your users to get the most out of the Web4 module and the data coming in. Thanks for listening and watching. You can learn more about me at jrockwoods.com. Take care.